Well, hello and welcome back to the Aaron Engineering Channel. Uh, a little bit of a different video for you today. I'd like to cover single point thread turning, all right? And this is for one of my previous apprentices at TAFE who reached out to me on, the, on a previous video and asked me a question. So I thought it would make a good one to cover. So last week, you'll remember that I machined the arbor for the gear cutters. So in this video today, what I'd like to do is actually cover how to cut this thread using the angular approach method. That's where you set your compound feed up to um, 60 degrees. So remember, uh, we turn it all the way to the front and then back it off to 30 degrees to get the 60. And then we work out a simple mass to work out how deep to actually cut this thread by using the compound uh, feed handle. All right, so uh, stick with me. Uh, you may find it interesting, you may learn something, you may not either, all right? So I'll get back to you at the end of the video. Thanks guys. Well, here's my BT30 Arbor that I'm currently making to fit that Involute gear cutter. Um, I've machined this shaft down here to 22 millis, like right on, right on the money. So let's set up the tool today to cut this thread. Now I'm going with a M22 fine thread metric, which is 1.5 mil pitch. So I'll take over to the tool post. Now this is a Dorian quick change tool post which I got, which I purchased from Arthur at Live Tools. Uh, I'm in love with it. It's the duck's gut, so to speak. Clear around position four, tool holder in. Now today I'm running a Iscar threading bar, uh, you know, OD turning bar I should say. Um, I'm running a PAL bit insert. Right, let's set it up on the job. I'll bring the tool up to the job here and I'll use the little six inch rule to check my tool height. You see my steel rule is slightly off a little bit. I'll just adjust that. Now when threading this today, I'm going to be using the angular approach method. So therefore I need to set my compound slide up to the 60 degrees. Now some do it at 59 degrees, whatever tickles your fancy. Drop off my two adjustment bolts here. Now when you do this, remember it's you've got to apply half that, so go to your 90 degrees first. Okay, and then I'll come back 30 from that, which will give me 60 degrees under here. Well, if you guys have been watching me for some time, you'll understand that my old Colchester Master is uh, Imperial, so it has an Imperial lead screw. However, it will still cut a metric thread. So if we look at our threading chart here, we're looking for a 1.5 mil pitch, which is here. And a 1.5 mil pitch means I've got to be in uh, C and then LS 6Y. So let's do that now. Now the first number L stands for which gear configuration I need to have in the back here of the headstock. And I know I've got this configuration because I've cut metric threads before and I've counted the teeth. Now, one more time to reiterate, I need to find uh, 1.5 pitch, so that's LS6Y. Uh, we're in C, so C here. Uh, we're in already in S. I need to move this over to Y. I might have to spin the chuck to get it to work. And down in here, in my lever selection, I need number six. So I brought the camera in here to show you. I've marked up roughly approximately 10 millimeters here. Uh, I'm going to make a little uh, thread run out groove. Now instead of using a parting off tool which gives me a gap of about 2.5 to 3 mil, I'm just going to use the 1.5 mil insert. I was very cautious doing that as that, that was the last 1.5 um, 
mill pitch insert that I've got so I want to be careful I didn't break that doing that so I just took my time right so what we're going to do now we're going to paint this surface Now we can do our test cut and ensure that the uh, correct pitch has been selected. Now when I'm threading today using the angular approach method I won't be using the cross feed. However you will notice that I've got the die wheel set to zero. Now remember what I was saying before, my lathe is an imperial and I'm cutting a metric thread. Now I'm not going to disengage the half nut when threading today. I'm going to leave the half nut engaged, back off and rewind. Now you can pick up the same spot again. But if you don't pick it up, you run the risk of uh, stuffing your thread up. So cross slide set on zero. I'll move you over to the compound feed now. You'll notice previously I set my compound feed up to the 60 degree angle. Now some people set it up to 59, that's fine, whatever tickles your fancy. I set it up on 60. I've got this also set on zero. Now when I'm feeding in today, I'll be feeding in with the compound wheel handle. Okay, set to zero. Once again, that's an imperial. Now I've got to work out my corrected angle for doing this, alright? So let's talk some shop math very, very quickly. When I look at my Kenwell's manual, my little book here, and I look up a 22mm thread uh, with 1.5mm pitch, I know the major, uh, basic major diameter is 22mm. The basic depth of thread is 9.20. Right, I've decided just to pause the video here and just throw in a little screenshot. If you want to work out your basic depth of thread here, it's a, just a simple mathematical calculation. You see the book here actually provides it. So whatever your pitch is, so for this thread here it's 1.5, so 1.5 mil pitch multiplied by this factor over here is 0.6134. Now when we were teaching the apprentices we just tell them to memorize 0.61, but let's take it that little bit further. So it's 344, we hit equals and that's our basic depth of thread there and that you'll see that that concurs with what the book's saying here 0 0.920 0 0.920 and they've left off the 16 on the end now it would be 0 0.9 if I was using the cross feed keep in mind I'm using the compound feed so now I've got a trig problem now to fix this trig problem today I need to work out that basic depth divided by cos 30 right so using my calculator 0 0.920 divided by cos 30 equals 1.0623 millimeters. Now when I convert that to an imperial measurement, because remember my Colchester is in imperial, it will be 41 thou, close to 42 thou to a total depth of thread. I have got a nut coming in the mail, I'm just waiting for it to arrive which I could test, so I'll probably pull up a little bit shy of that and uh, test it with a nut. Now, I may not have this nut by the time I publish this video. Thread's coming along nicely. Just gonna drop in with my pitch gauge one more time. Too late if it wasn't right, the screw would be stuffed. Yep, like a finger in a glove. We'll keep going. 
I like to take um, five thou at a time, and then I do another clean up pass. Well, hopefully you're still sticking here to the end of the video. Um, it helps with the uh, watch count helps, as you know, on YouTube. Helps get your video promoted. Um, I hope you enjoyed the single point threading today of this M22 by 1.5 uh, fine pitch thread. Um, I hope you learned something as well uh, using the mass, how to use the angular approach method and how to do the corrected angle, the length of that. Um, so this video today was for my previous student. Uh, at TAFE. Uh, I, I probably only taught him for about six months before I left the TAFE and went back to the secondary department. Um, his name's Fun Sook. Now Fun Sook comes from Tibet, I believe, or something like that. And uh, the poor bugger, he, he risked everything to escape his country and of course uh, persecution and that, that's a whole other uh, story. But he's a really nice young man, uh, very respectful, uh, very friendly. And uh, he reached out to me in a, in a comment about a question about threading. So today, fun soup, this video is for you, mate. I hope you learned something. And uh, keep your head down and bottom up, as, the, as, as we say in Australia, when you're learning. And uh, do what the teacher says. Good on you, mate. Have a lovely day, ladies and gentlemen. I'll see you on the next video. Bye for now. Now, when I'm doing the threading here today, you'll notice a couple of things. I've got my cross feed set to zero and I've just stuck my little six inch rule here with a couple of magnets. Now I have a gap here. So every time that I wind off to clear that when I run into the thread groove or the run out groove, um, I can come back and I know I don't get confused so I know where I, my start position is again. I don't have a digital readout on this lathe. So this is a little, little handy trick. You know, you could put a pointer on there or something like that and it's roughly flush. Now if I'm one turn out, you'll see it. It uh, stands out like dog's balls. If I come back one full turn as well. So if I was one turn out either way, you can quite easily see that. I come back to my zero. Now each time I'll be feeding, I'll be feeding in today with the compound wheel. Let's bring you up to see it. So I'm going to be feeding in here five thou at a time. So 5 thou, then 10 thou, then 15 thou, 20 thou, 25, 30, 35, 40, then I'll take my 1 thou over that. Now each time I do it, as, uh, as I take that cut pass, I'll actually rewind and take a spring pass. That's just the way I like doing it. You don't have to do it that way. Whatever tickles your fancy.